All right, so if you've got low oil pressure on your Dodge 318 or 360 or even the V6s, you know, the oil system is pretty simple. And there's only like three groups of areas where you could be losing oil pressure from. Your oil galley plugs, the oil pump, or the uh, oil pressure sending unit could be failing. Now, those are the three main ones. Now, you could be losing, you could be having low oil pressure because if you have a failing lifter or a main bearing or a rod bearing that's just pretty much disintegrated, you could have low oil pressure that way too, but that's not very common at all. So the first thing you're going to want to do is check the oil pressure sending unit, which is back there behind the distributor or to the left of the distributor there. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's under the plug wires. It's back there. You're going to want to take that off and uh, use a mechanical oil pressure gauge or a oil pressure tester to test the oil pressure, see what it's really at. On the 5.2 Magnums, it's actually supposed to be pretty low. For light-duty trucks, at least, it says minimum of a 5 PSI at idle. So, I mean, you could have really low oil pressure, but just get that checked out with a uh, mechanical gauge. And if you've gone through that and you realize the sending unit is not the issue, then what you're going to want to do is check the oil pump, okay? Um, the easiest way to do this is to just pull it out and inspect it for damage. Usually, go show you the oil pump. Usually a failing oil pump will, let's see here. So this is the oil pump I just pulled out. It's not broken or nothing, but we think it might be having some internal issues. It's not making any noise or nothing, but I think either the spring went out behind that cap or something. But usually this little bushing here will crack. It'll crack and then the little hex rod won't be spinning the oil pump anymore. So that's the second place your oil pressure system is going to fail is right here in the oil pump. Now the third place, the oil galley plugs. Now this only really applies if you've just recently rebuilt your engine or if you've just recently had it down to the block. Um, I know that we just rebuilt this engine, you know, 30 over, ported heads, camshaft, all that. And um, the machine shop, I had expected that they would have gotten all the oil galley plugs, but I had low oil pressure. I diagnosed that it was not the sending unit. I used mechanical gauge and I replaced the sending unit. They're like five bucks. Um, that didn't do it. I was going to try thicker oil, but then I figured, you know what? It's freshly rebuilt. It should have good oil pressure at idle. And now when you gave her a little bit of gas, she would have oil pressure on the gauge. But when you would let off at idle, it would just disappear at all uh, completely. So you want to check your oil galley plugs. There are two... Right down here under the camshaft thrust plate. The machine shop forgot to put these in for me, so I had to go get some, and I have to retrofit them. I have to just cut them down a little bit and make them a little shorter so they don't interfere with these little, those little drilled slots in there. But anyway, so there's two right here under the, under the crankshaft main cap number five. There should be one. I don't know if you can see under there or not, but... Yep, crankshaft main cap number five back there, all the way back there. It'll have the oil pump mounted to it soon, but that one has an oil galley pl cut plug, like the front ones here. And that one's not going to be right at the surface. It's going to be like a few inches into the hole. And then there are three, four more? Four more, I believe? Four more, or five more oil galley plugs, and they're all threaded. So there's one under the oil filter, and you'll have to take out the oil filter and remove the little plate and stud that the oil filter goes on and there should be a threaded oil galley plug there um, and then there's three on the back of the block that you would have to separate the transmission and engine to look at and i'm not doing that right now obviously but there's three um there's one right here behind the distributor one over here just like parallel to the other side um or not parallel, but symmetrical to the other side. And then there's one, like, down there at that corner of the back of the block. And those are three threaded plugs. And then there's another plug that is commonly left out. And the plug that's behind the distributor, or that's in line with the distributor on the back of the block, uh, you take out that plug, and behind that plug there's actually another plug that you can access. If you remove the distributor and you look down the hole, 
towards the front of the engine. There will be an oil plug or an oil galley plug there as well. So there's one in front of the distributor, one behind the distributor, one uh, symmetrical on the other side of the engine to the distributor, one on the bottom passenger side of the block on the back, one threaded one under the oil um, filter plate thingy, and then the two up here are cut plugs, and then the last one is a cut plug, and that one goes under the number five main cap. And that's pretty much the whole oil system. Yeah, just think about it logically, you know, if you're losing oil pressure, obviously check the unit. If you have actually low oil pressure, then oil is leaking out of somewhere from the system. It's as simple as that. You just have to find out where the leak is coming from. Like I said, freshly rebuilt blocks can have the leak from any of the oil galley plugs. Um, it, you can have a leak from low uh, or high clearances on your main bearings and your rod bearings. So if you have like a 300,000 mile motor and you're getting low oil pressure, just try 10W40. That'll probably fix it. And that doesn't really matter just because the uh, main bearings are just getting a little worn. Um, the oil pump is definitely a big thing that can lose oil pressure. But if your oil pump goes bad, if you give her a little bit of gas and she does not build oil pressure, it's probably your oil pump. Um, and the reason that I kept driving this truck just a little bit around town after we noticed low oil pressure when she was hot is because I didn't hear any ticking at idle, so I knew she had at least some oil pressure. Now, if she's at idle and she starts to tick, um, or she starts to get like, or she heats up real quick at idle when the gauge says there's no oil pressure, then definitely do not run the truck anymore. Because if there's a ticking, that means that the lifters aren't opening all the way, and that's a sign that there's no oil pressure pumping up the lifters. Um, now, if she's getting hot real, wide, right, real quick, that just means that there's a lot of friction on the bearings, and that's no, that's no bueno. Um, I did inspect all my main bearings. They're all good to go. Some of them have a little bit of wear, but it's honestly expected. Um, so I checked all my main bearings. I'm not going to check the rod bearings. They're going to be the same, and they're really hard to get off. And I know they're going to look the same as the main bearings. They're not going to be too worn. And I'm pretty sure this oiling system oils the bottom end first before the top end, so I'm not worried about it. Um, and yeah, it's about the entire oiling system summed up right there. And those are the things I would check if you have oil pressure. And if for some reason you just fix all that stuff and you check it all, you fix it all, and you still have oil pressure, then you probably have a crack in the block somewhere, which is not good at all. Because like if you checked all the bearings, if you checked the entire system where it's supposed to run and you still have oil pressure and everything's working perfectly fine, then you probably have a crack in the block and it's leaking oil out from somewhere in the block, and that's that's not good. But that I doubt that will ever happen.